I came to today's meeting because uh, there is a group of people all very interested in carry malformation, yet they all come from different disciplines. And I get to hear about all different aspects of, the, of this problem, uh, and not just the concept of surgical decompression. What I got out of it is that there's a lot of very important systemic problems that occur with the autonomic nervous system, with the immune system, that need to be considered for treatment. Well, I really came to the meeting because I see a number of patients with these peculiar diseases. They're not well understood. The majority of physicians either have never heard of them or because they are peculiar, they think they must have some psychological basis. And I'm interested in a group of specialists here who are really trying to define these, work out plausible hypotheses for what they are, and try to do something about improving treatment. They've also got to improve the knowledge of the rest of the medical profession about these unusual problems. The reason I came to today's meeting is number one, I was asked by Dr. Henderson and Dr. Francomano to come. My discipline is intertwines with theirs and it, is, and it turns out to be a very specific and typecast type of uh, organization. So I had the pleasure of being invited to this meeting um, to kind of bridge the gap um, regarding how the immune system crosstalks with the nervous system. And this was a unique opportunity to kind of step outside of my circle and broaden my uh, knowledge about what goes on in individuals that are affected with connective tissue disorders. Um, great interaction with, with other le thought leaders uh, uh, in order to try to push the envelope on trying to understand why these patients are so disabled by so many different organ systems. Well, actually, I came to this meeting. I found out about it uh, just sort of screening through the uh, internet, trolling around, because I had a series of patients that uh, in a clinic that I've run that I just don't really know what to do with. It's uh, uh, a constellation of symptoms that uh, seems to be fairly poorly defined in the literature. Uh, I know that uh, some of these children have uh, Chiari, and a lot of them have symptoms of Chiari. As a suggestion at least of craniocervical instability and so I actually found the um, on the uh, CSF website that this meeting was going on and ended up coming to try to get more information about that. In my practice I see patients coming to me almost every day with carry malformation. I look at the anatomy and decide whether uh, whether decompression should be done. A meeting like this is very, ba very valuable because it, it allows me to see all the other aspects, uh, neurological, immunological, that I don't, I don't get a chance to understand and learn about uh, in, a, in a daily practice. This gives a much, much broader uh, treatment plan for each patient. Well, the importance of this being interdisciplinary is that these concepts are well beyond the reach of any single specialist. Neurosurgeons, for instance, understand about spinal instability. We deal with it from many causes. Uh, that's not understood well at all by most of the other people here at this meeting. Uh, however, something like mast cell activation, the typical neurosurgeon never heard of it. Uh, and that has to be incorporated. Uh, none of us know anything about uh, the genetics. That's unusual throughout most of medicine. I think complex problems like this really can't be approached any other way except by involving all of the needed specialties. This meeting showed many, many facets to the Chiari and EDS and hypermobility syndrome. Showed many assets in the fact that it showed us how mast cells work and how different parts of the body interact with the uh, hypermobility and Chiari syndromes. We're kind of like back to the future. You know, we're going to go back in the past to kind of try to get some good, you know, pathophysiology to try to figure out what kind of treatments are available. Um, and excited about a couple of new techniques that I had no idea existed regarding how to get these patients under better control. I think that first of all it's a wonderful opportunity just to be able to network with other people who are going through the same thing and working with the same types of patients. It both validates some of the things that I already have been thinking and doing, but the, the better part is that it gives some great new ideas and just some practical 
guidance on how to address some of those issues that are going on. I think a second thing is that it, it reinforces the idea that we really need to be able to do a better job of expanding the knowledge out there in the general medical community about uh, Chiari, about um, uh, Ehlers-Danlos, hypermobility syndromes, and how all those things kind of work together in the constellation of symptoms that can be associated with it. This meeting is also very important to me because we have a very special project. It's called the Common Data Element Project. There we're trying to all get the same language when we talk about Chiari malformation. Every time we have this meeting, we get together and continue on a process of developing a library that we hope people across the country and across the world use in their own research. That way, when anybody does uh, research on Chiari, we're all using the same terms with the same definitions, and therefore the information can be better understood and better combined. When we have our meetings with the uh, Chiari Foundation, it allows us to continue that progress on track. And we're hoping that uh, we're going to get that common language within the next year. You know, unfortunately, uh, medicine has kind of developed into assembly line, compartmentalized, uh, lack of crosstalk and cross fertilization of ideas. And when you're talking about organ systems that interact every moment of every day, and you don't have, you need insights from individuals who think about those organism, organ systems. And, you know, today alone was a wonderful example of how, how people think about the same system. It's kind of like different set of eyes. It was just really provocative and pushing the envelope. I think one of the challenges in our medical education system and the way that we do research today is that we tend to build uh, isolated ivory towers of knowledge. If I'm a pediatric cardiac electrophysiologist, then I do pediatric cardiac electrophysiology research. If I'm a uh, neurosurgeon, I do neurosurgical research. One of the struggles is, is that as we add each layer to the top of that ivory tower of knowledge, it uh, doesn't take advantage of knowledge that's being gained in the other towers or other specialties. When we have the opportunity to be able to bring together folks from lots of different disciplines, even dis disciplines outside of medicine, uh, as we had at this conference, then it lets us start to build bridges between those towers of knowledge. And almost always we can gain something, some insight into the understanding of our own specialty by being able to look at it through the lens of one of those other disciplines.